I'm going to talk about structural coupling and how living systems construct the, the objects that they found in the uh, in the niche. You know, I this is an old idea due initially to Kant, and uh, then developed first in the 20th century by Jacob von Wetzel, that living systems uh, are active devices that create their universe. And um, then I'm going to talk about this idea and what we have been doing lately to, to, to advance. Then for the people who don't know, you know, I, I come from the lab of Maturana and Varela that they created many years ago in the University of Chile, that they created the idea of uh, autopoiesis. And the idea of autopoiesis is that um, on an autopoietic network is a network that has two properties. First, it has a circular organization in the sense that it's a network of processes that produce components, and these components are essential to the existence of the processes that make them. This is the idea of a circular organization. And the other idea is that uh, this network, by its very functioning, produces self-encapsulation. And that this is the secret, according to Maturano and Varela, uh, the or this autopoietic organization is the real secret of uh, biological systems. And um, they, uh, they created the idea around 1970, between 69 and 72. And this idea that self-fabrication, because this is a notion of self-fabrication, is the core of biological phenomena. Phenomena is not new. It's, it's at that time, before them, Robert Rosen, 10 years before at least, has published a theory called MR systems that is also a theory of self-fabrication that is a very obscure, obs at that time, and for, for many, many, many years, it was a very obscure theory because Robert Rosen only wrote for himself then it has very appealing ideas, but um, for many, many years, nobody pay attention to the work of Rosen. Then these two ideas, autopoiesis and uh, MR systems, are more or, le more or less interlinked. And if you want to read about these two theory, I recommend uh, two books. Rosen wrote at the end of his life in 1981, a book called Life Itself, where he summarized his, um, his life work. And um, the big summary is that Rosen thought that he found a demonstration, a demonstration of how self-fabrication can logically appear in a, in a network of processes that are coupled through the fabrication of components. He thought that he has like a mathematical theorem. And um, um, from my viewpoint, this is a very appealing idea, but it's not correct. But even if it is not correct, it's extremely interesting. And we should dev devote a lot of time about uh, to, to reinterpret Rosen. What is nice of the work of Rosen is that uh, he understood that self-fabrication self can lead to anticipatory behaviors in systems with self-fabrication. Then in summary, Rosen tried to demonstrate how self-fabrication can appear in a network. And Maturana and Varela on the other thanks, they in the other, in the other side, they analyzed the consequence of self-fabrication. And the consequence in, for the immune system, for evolution, uh, they didn't, uh, try to demonstrate how self-fabrication arises, they put it like a uh, axiom, you know, the central fact of living system is self-fabrication. And um, they put a lot of attention to the notion of autonomy. They demonstrate that self-fabricating systems will show autonomy. And uh, they wrote initially in Spanish, but that book, Autopoiesis and Cognition, was written, was published in 1990, in 1980. Um, from then on, it has been a veritable explosion of different words uh, exploring the notion of autopoiesis with different degrees of uh, quality.
And I'm going to use a lot of uh, uh, diagram in this presentation. This is the symbol of an autopoietic system, is the Ouroboros, the snake that eats itself. And remember that the important thing is self-fabrication and self-encapsulation. Also, very few people know that autopoiesis, that this theory about uh, metabolism and about self-fabrication, in fact, began as a theory about the organization of the nervous system by a paper that Maturana wrote in 69 in the then very advanced laboratory in Illinois University called Biological Computer Laboratories. And um, here is the fundamental idea. We are used to the computer metaphor where the brain capture a sti external stimulus, analyzes, use, analyze the stimulus using logic that we think that is a universal tool, and then it produces a correct response. Yeah? Then this is the metaphor as the brain as a computer. On the other hand, Maturana in 1969 said, no, 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 no. The brain doesn't analyze the, an external reality. The brain, the only thing that he does continuously He's in a loop, action, perception, action, perception, and is in this loop that the objects are created. Then the nervous system does not analyze the reality, but it creates internal correlations between action and perception. Yeah. And because essentially a living system, also a very important point here, a living system is before anything, Ill, anything else an acting, acting device. They need to act. Perhaps they are the self-fabrication, self-fabricating device, but they exist in a universe that demand action. And a living system always must answer the fundamental question, what to do next? And this is valid for a bacteria or for us or for a whale, for everything. And like in some sense, the fundamental question of a living system is to retreat or to advance? This is the ever-present question. Then you cannot analyze a living system in the void. Here I show that a living system is always in a relation, you know, a living system is always in, in a relation with the medium through action and perception. And here is a new concept in the theory. A living system is a relation between an organism and its medium. You understand? And it, I will put here perhaps a living system is in a relation between an autopoietic system and its medium. You know, th they don't exist in a void. And here I will show you the next slide is the fundamental idea uh, that I'm going to touch today. And this is the idea that Maturana thought was his great contribution. And also Varela thought that it was a great contribution. Maturana called this idea structural coupling and Varela in action. And the idea is as follow. Here, uh, let me change my color a little. At the, no, the, at the right, not the left, you have a living system, you know, an autopoietic system that is in a very elementary relation with its medium. Then initially, because it's the first encounter between the autopoietic system and the medium, the relation is undefined. You know, it's not clear what is the loop action perception. But if the living system, the autopoietic system, uh, continues to exist in that environment in a recursive manner, little by little, the, the relation begins to be more defined and the living system and the medium change in a, like, a complementary way. And here in T2, you have that the living system is complementary, totally complementary to an external object. And uh, an external observer here will reach the incorrect opinion that the living system adapted to the external object without understanding that the living system, in fact, co-created the external object because of this recursive interaction with the, with the medium. And this process is called structural coupling, and Varela called it in action. Then, and then this is why it's so important the relation between a living system and his medium. 
And then um, I will repeat it that initially the interaction between the organs and the meal is not established, but little by little, if the interaction are repetitive and recursive, the medium and the organs change in a congruent manner. And I must insist also that uh, a naive observer will think that the organism has adapted to the object, while the real phenomenon is totally different because the organism has produced, has organized an, a medium that didn't have, excuse me, didn't have a structure, has uh, organized the medium, excuse me, has organized the medium into an object. And here it's a very important thing to, this very theoretical idea can be put in the context of uh, Bayesian inference. And here you have the basic idea of how it happened. You have the medium here that affects the sensory lamina of the living system and it produces it produce a, a very complex set of internal signals. And these internal signals are used by the organism to compute, in some sense, the future act, the action that the organism must, must produce. Then the first step that the organism must take is to compute these probabilities. Which is the probability that I am facing object X due to the fact that I am seeing the internal signal SI, F sub, sub I. Then the autopoietic organization inside the, the organism solves an, infer in, an infer inferential problem. That is, what is the probability that I am facing object Y given that the internal signal are SK? Then this is the, the core of, of the mathematical problem then you can make this idea a little more precise. Imagine that you have a, a universe with three objects, three objects, alpha, beta, and gamma, and every of these objects produce an internal signal. And, and these internal signals are not simple molecules, but are family of molecules, and they are very complex uh, manifolds of molecules. And then you have the, the internal signals that are produced and the object or actions. And then in every single second, in every single encounter between the organism and the medium, this, uh, you have like a conditional, conditional probability matrix that represent every entry of the matrix represent which is the probability that I am given is, a given object alpha, given that I am seeing the signal three, by example. And what is interesting is that you can consider a equation of an updating equation in order to transform this very generic, um, this very generic formulation into an updating mechanism and transform it as a classifier. And in this way, it's very similar to the FEP theory of Dr. Friston. But in Chile, we don't think about this problem in this manner. We add a little twist because in this figure, what you see is a universe where the objects, alpha, beta, and gamma, pre-exist. Yeah. Pre-exist to the organism. Then this goes again against the grain of our theory where the objects are produced by the encounter between the organism and the medium. Then the idea that it's a classifier, we, we don't agree in that. We, um, we, we have another view that is as follow. Initially, then this is why this is called a structural coupling, Bayesian inference and object construction. Initially, when you have an organism that is facing a medium, he's facing like, in a, he doesn't have a precision about which are the perturbations. You know, the perturbation can be many, many, many different things, which is the set of internal signals that every one of these perturbation triggers, and which are the actions that this organism takes. Then 
Initially, nothing is defined, not the signal, the actions, or the objects. Uh, then our idea, and this is what we're uh, developing now, is that an object then is like a random walk in the space of action and signals. Because the organism initially, he doesn't understand what an object, the boundaries between the different perturbation cannot be assignated to a given object or to another one. Then uh, you have in the phase space of action and signal, you have a random walk, and it's this particularly random walk that little by little is get, it gets refined, that is the an object. Then an object is this particularly trajectory, and um, then it's not a point, you know, it's not the final point in the, traje in the trajectory, it's, it's, it's the trajectory itself, and the trajectory is, it's self, itself changes, because of random event, depend on who, what you are encountering, and by an updating mechanism that is more, more or less like a, a Hebian updating mechanism, then um, an important that the autonomy, the autonomy that you discover in living system means that the objects that the living system created are not necessarily uh, equal to the object that the experimenter observer detects in his own world, world. Then, uh, then currently we are developing this uh, theory of like a stochastic random walk. And in this sense, it's very different from FEP because now we don't treat the organism as a classifier, but as a constructor of uh, distinctions. And after talking with uh, Wesley last week and seeing his wonderful setup, you can imagine how this theory can be applied to the neural culture that he's planning to use with this amazing technology of thousands and thousands of electrodes where you, uh, you, you obtain an electrical state of the network and this electrical state of the network constitute the actions of the network upon the environment that is defined by electrical stimulation and chemical stimulation, then an object could be a sequence of electrical and chemical stimulation. You know, an object would be a very complex, uh, complex chain of events and um, that initially you will not discover easily what the, these objects are, but you can put the experiment of Wesley in the framework of, of structural coupling. And here I have um, developed two different ways, new methods to assess neural activity. One is something that we call the coefficient of variation of the envelope that detects how much a neural signal is similar to Gaussian noise. And the other is that we use the framework of filter Poisson process to interpret collective signals as um, not, uh, not as being created by the addition of sine waves, but by the independent activation of pulse, pulses that uh, generate the overall signal. Then we can, in this way, we can, I think, measure uh, quantify the electrical state of a neural culture in the new dimensions. Then this is what I wanted to tell you at the very beginning of the meeting. I am open to questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>